Hi everyone and welcome to our first presentation. This is going to be about knee bending and straightening. We're gonna go over all these stuff associated with this. So this is the schedule for the presentations coming up. I'm gonna do one every Monday for the next five weeks. So mark your calendars if any of these seem interesting to you. I assume April 10th and April 17th will be popular. IT band pain is a popular topic along with um, stiffness and swelling is also very popular. So in today's um, presentation, we'll kind of go over a little bit of everything. Um, we'll go over scar tissue, the first six weeks and why they're so important, the causes of um, stiffness with knee bending and straightening, and then we'll go over some exercise ideas at the end. So for those of you who don't know me, my name is Dr. Samantha Smith. I am a uh, physical therapist. I practice in Dallas, Texas, and I created a website called succeedcourses.com, which is just a um, resource for those of you going through a knee replacement. Uh, there's written articles on there by me, and there's also a, um, a four courses available, and I'm the instructor of all the courses. And then if you are not watching this in the Facebook group, please join the Facebook group. You can search it on Facebook, Succeed With Your New Knee. And it is a really great resource um, for those of you going through this surgery. So just wanted to mention the courses. There are four courses on my website. If you are needing help with your, um, if you haven't had surgery yet and you wanna know what exercises you need to be doing and what stretches you need to be doing, I'd really recommend the prehab course. It's so important to do some sort of prehab before the surgery. If you know you're gonna have surgery but you haven't committed yet, the pre-surgery course is the best one. If you've already had surgery and you're looking for help with your pain, your swelling, stiffness, exercises, stretches, you'll wanna do the post-surgery course. And then the bundled course is all three of these put together in one and you'll get the 55 pages of exercises in the bundled course. Each one of these courses does have exercises and stretches associated with it. But of course the bundled course is gonna have all of them in, in one course. So let's get started talking about scar tissue. So this is definitely a hot topic um, with people bending their knee and stretching after surgery. So 100% of people will have some sort of scar tissue after surgery. It is normal to develop scar tissue after any type of surgery, regardless of what it is. Um, scar tissue protects us from bacteria. So your, your body will form like a little film around your knee replacement and it'll actually be like a barrier against um, any scar tissue or any bacteria that's going to try to get to your knee. So it's a good thing to have back. Uh, sorry, I keep messing up my words. It's a good thing to have scar tissue. So three to 6% of people will form dense scar tissue that causes problems. So I know there are um, a couple of you in the Facebook group that have been part of this three to 6%. You formed dense scar tissue inside the knee joint that didn't allow you to bend or straighten your knee all the way. So it's the location of the scar tissue that we're worried about. And it's also the density of the scar tissue that we're worried about. How thick is it? Because scar tissue is not just um, one thickness. It, it forms thicker and thicker and thicker over time. And it takes about six weeks. We'll talk about that in a second. So all tissues um, in your body scar except for bone. So you go through the surgery, you're going to have your scar on the outside of your leg, right? The, the big incision down the front of your knee, you're gonna have that scar. You're gonna have some scarring on your muscles and your, um, and your tendons. And then the bone is also going to have a, a little bit of I guess it's gonna look a little bit different compared to what it did before, but your bone is the only tissue in the body that doesn't form a scar. It actually goes back to its normal cells. So dense scar tissue is tougher than steel. So they've done studies on scar tissue, seeing how tough it is and how, um, how we can break it. And if you form dense scar tissue, um, which forms between you know around six weeks, if you're one of that three to 6%, it's almost impossible to move through um, scar tissue that's very dense. We'll talk more about kind of, you know, that six weeks mark and, and what all that means 
here, here next. Okay, so dense scar tissue usually takes about six weeks to form. So if you have true scar tissue limiting your range of motion, it's going to be really difficult for you to make gains in your range of motion if it truly is scar tissue. So this is where it gets tricky. If you, um, if it's not true scar tissue that's limiting you, and you're kind of making some progress every week, it's most likely due to pain, swelling, you know, tight muscles, etc. It's not scar tissue. So it is a little bit tricky to find out if it is scar tissue or it is, you know, tight muscles, etc. So the how we find out if it is scar tissue is if you're stuck below 90. So if you're stuck at a certain number, let's say you're stuck at 60 degrees of knee bending, and you've, you've had that same number for six weeks post-surgery, it's most likely due to scar tissue. Your body just formed scar tissue really quickly and there is nothing you could do about it. You did everything right. You stretched your knee, you did all the PT exercises, but you were just one of those people where your genetics made you very lucky to give you a lot of scar tissue really quickly. So another thing, I like to mention, this This is a very common question. Some people will say, at physical therapy, you know, I get to 105 degrees of knee bending, and then I go home and I can only get to 95. What's going on? So if your numbers are progressing, and then you go home and they regress, it's possibly due to swelling, tight muscles, etc. So a lot of times people will get more range of motion at physical therapy because one, they give you good exercises to warm your muscles up. They help kind of reduce some of the swelling before they do any stretches. And also it's a lot easier to gain range of motion when somebody else is kind of pushing you to do it. And maybe even pushing your knee for you. Um, people are going to gain more range of motion at physical therapy than on their own. It's just kind of human nature. We don't like to be in pain <laughs> on our own, but if somebody's there motivating us or, you know, doing it for us, it's a little bit easier. So these are some causes of, um, of a stiff knee. So swelling definitely causes stiffness. You know, if you've had your surgery already, you know this is a huge uh, reason why you can't bend and straighten your knee. It just feels so tight. It feels like a balloon is about to pop. Um, that swelling is going to be a huge culprit of, um, you know, decreased range of motion. You want to fight through this. Um, you, you're not going to want to wait until the swelling goes away to stretch your knee because you'd be waiting about six months. It will take about six months for the swelling to go away. With that said, it does slowly go away over time. It's not going to be, you know, the same amount of swelling for six months. It's going to slowly get better and better. Tight muscles are another reason for it for a stiff knee. Um, if your muscles are tight and they're not, you know, relaxing when you do these stretches, it's going to cause some issues. So if you didn't have good range of motion before surgery, just imagine how tight your muscles are, your ligaments, your tendons, all those tissues in the knee have, you know, may you may not have stretched them for years prior to surgery. So just imagine, you know, bending your knee now and trying to work through that range of motion. It's going to be really tough. So this is where prehab comes into play. If you haven't done any prehab exercises before your surgery, this is so important to do. At least do some stretching. Again, if you need some more structured guidance, look into my website and look into the prehab course. Pain is going to be another reason for a stiff knee. We don't like to be in pain and bending the knee is painful. So it's going to cause you to not gain your range of motion. And then having a bad physical therapist um, is another reason why your knee could be stiff. If they're not educating you on why it's so important to bend your knee, if they're not having you ice and elevate often, you know, giving you pain relieving, um, you know, modalities like ice, electrical stimulation, heat on the muscle, you know, there's so many things that we can do to help reduce some of your pain and swelling to get the range of motion as quickly as possible. So here are some of my favorite bending exercises. These are some I do in the first six weeks um, and they get you know slowly more difficult um, over time just depending on how the person is doing. This are, these are your heel slides. Most of, these, most of you will get this in the first you know one, 
one to two weeks post-surgery. This is another one that I do with my patients in the first one to two weeks post-surgery. These are what I call kitchen sink squats, where you just hold on to the kitchen sink and you drop your bottom down as low as you can, and that knee will bend. Just make sure you don't go too far down where you can't get back up. But luckily your hands will be on the sink if you need help getting <laughs> pulled back up. But this is a great one to try. Biking is an awesome um, way to increase your knee bending um, because you can, you know, work on it and, you know, bike, you know, two minutes and then slowly move yourself closer to the bike or move the bike closer to you to get the knee to bend more. So here's some exercises that are a little bit more intense. This one is more of a prehab um, exercise that you can do. I wouldn't necessarily do this, you know, with my patients after a knee replacement because this is definitely more than 120 degrees of motion. Um, but this is something to try if, if you're looking to get a little bit more range of motion after surgery. You can try this one. This one um, is not my favorite, but I've had people do it and they say it really helps. So you just kind of grab some sort of towel or, um, you know, dog leash or anything you have to wrap around your foot and you pull, the, pull it towards you. You have to be able to lay on your stomach. This one, um, I've had some people in the Facebook group try this one and they said they really like it. You're able to control your leg on the wall a little bit better and you just kind of slowly slide it down and let gravity assist you. And then this one over here, you'll need a staircase um, where, you know, I, you can also use like your curb uh, right next to your mailbox and hold on to the mailbox and you just put your leg up on the curb or the step and then you lean forward and this will give you a really good stretch. This is one of my favorites, but you just have to be, you know, careful with this one. So all these exercises are demonstrated in my courses. So with knee straightening, these are some that I do. This is my favorite one that I do with my patients. You just prop your leg up on a chair and you let gravity push down. Um, you can also put weights on top of your knee to push it down even further. This is a great stretch as well. One of my favorites. Um, if you have the flexibility, this is a great um, hamstring stretch. And then this is one that I have people do, you know, after six weeks post-surgery, um, just putting a ankle weight and then laying on your stomach and letting gravity just kind of pull your leg down. This is one that you can hold for a long period of time. So um, the longer you hold stretches, the better. Um, but you know, don't hold them too long. And we're going to talk about that next slow and steady with the stretches. If you're, if you're before six weeks post-surgery, you don't want to stretch for one minute and then the next day stretch for, you know, five minutes. You want to go slow and steady. And especially in the first like one to th one, two and three weeks post-surgery, I'm having my patients stretch like maybe 10 to 15 seconds and, you know, resting and then doing that three times, you know, three times a day. So all of, you know, my kind of protocol that I go through is in my course. If you really want some structured guidance on what to do after your surgery um, or your physical, you know, your physical therapist that you're working with should definitely give you some insight on that. So again, check out the courses if you need more structured um, advice and guidance with your knee replacement. You can view the courses on your laptop, on your phone, iPad, anywhere. The courses are available forever once you buy them. And thank you guys for listening to the presentation and stay tuned for the next um, ones that'll come on the next following Monday. So Thank you guys so much.